Danse Anin Buju. Hello and welcome. You're listening to Music That Carries Truth, a special program for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation here on CBC Radio and CBC Music. I'm Rosanna Deerchild, your favorite cousin. We are broadcasting across Turtle Island right now, taking the time to honor our survivors and their stories through music and some great conversation. My guests today are Nadia and Jason Bernstick and Sebastian Gaskin. They'll be sharing their gifts with us as we recognize the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. This is music that carries truth. Come join the circle. You are welcome here. We're going to get right into some music. Sebastian Gaskin will be joining us a little later in the show, but first I want to welcome Jason and Jason and Nadia <laughs> Bernstick. I almost combined your names there. Cool. Made you what, what would that be? That would be a, a J. Nadia? <laughs> I like it. Love it. New name. <laughs> well, thank you both for being with us today. Uh, thanks for thank having you. us. Uh, Nadia and Jason Bernstick are Bernstick. Here they are with their first song for us today. This one is called Closer. Oh, 
That is Burn Stick and Closer. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Got my thank heart you. open already. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Who wants to tell me what the story or the inspiration is behind that song? Uh, sure, I will. So that one, it was really um, when our son was born. It was such an overwhelming moment. And we, I think it was sort of the, the, the greatest prayer I've ever made to the creator to give us some kind of superpower to be able to raise our child. And I think that's sort of the story of every parent, like in that when you when you give birth and when you you have you, you bring this this child into the world, I think you would do anything for them. And I think that's that's what that this that story is um, just trying our hardest to do everything that we can to to raise a child that will that will make it make it beautifully into this world. So mm-hmm. it's really about that. Mm-hmm. It's a good prayer to start a life with, for sure. <laughs> uh, and today be, is about honoring uh, the stories of our residential school survivors, many of whom um, would have been on a receiving end of that prayer, I'm sure, but we're not. What are you thinking about on this day, Nadia? That's a good question. I think that a lot of children didn't get that chance, and a lot of parents didn't get that chance. And I think that's just what we're trying to come to terms with and also what we don't want for our child. I think we're trying to do our best for, for him and for, and yeah, I don't know. I think that, that that's that prayer. I think it's just, we're going to make it, we're going to, it's going to be different. It's going to be different now. Yeah. Mm. And Jason, what about for you? What are you thinking about on this day? Oh, it's, this one's always a tough one for me. Uh, you know, being part of the, the 60 scoop myself, um, going through that stuff, I, I you know, I, I get it. Um, you know, I can say that I didn't, you know, have a lot of bad experiences some other people might have had, but, you know, still it wasn't, wasn't good. Um, but for me, it's, um, you know, as a father, like just being the best father I can be for my son um, and not like giving him my stuff, you know, like. Uh, not going back to those places when I was a kid, when I was his age, going through those things and giving him something much, much better and reminding myself not to give into those feelings because if they do, I feel like they win, you know? So it's just uh, being the the best dad I can be for him. Yeah. As you mentioned, you, you grew up as part of the scoop, which is that uh, part of history where the Canadian government uh, allowed children to be taken and fostered and adopted out to non-Indigenous families. Are you comfortable sharing some of that story with us? Uh, sure. You know, um, yeah, I mean, that's always the tough one. And I mean, how much do you tell on radio <laughs> and interviews and stuff, you know? But, um, you know, I have thought about um, pressing charges. Um, I've thought about a lot of other things, too. Uh, but that was one of the things I definitely thought about going back and doing. Um uh, but I think they, I think they're gone now. So I think they're, they have passed, which is, um, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some things that happened as a kid that, um, created a pretty angry person and, um, it's been a lifelong journey, um, you know, finding my way through that and around it and, you know, all that, you know, it's one of those things. Mm. How yeah. long were you part of the... System. I was apprehended, I think, um, three years oldish, and then I think came home when I was close to 10. I spent a short time in a, a boarding school in Edmonton called the Atonement Home. Um, that was a surreal experience, not something that I want any kid to go through. I just think it's like the most unnatural thing for kids to be away from their family and from their from their parents. And so, and being in a situation like that, it's like, it's not a camp, you know, it's not like fun. And, you know, you're battling every day as a kid just to get through the day. Um, you know, it's, it's should, no kid should have to go through that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did that experience inform your choice uh, to be a music maker and a creator? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think there was a choice, really. I think it was more like, uh, this is something I have to do for myself uh, to heal and, and feel better about things and uh, to give myself some power maybe even to take my power back and in some ways you know um but yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's been a saving grace for me like if i didn't have music i don't know 
where I would be or what I'd be doing. Yeah. You hear that a lot with creators. Nadia, do you feel the same way that this was not so much a choice as a way to make it through your experiences as well? Yeah, I don't... That's This is my way of, like, saying what I feel, I guess, or or healing from different different things I go through. I don't I don't have any other outlet like that and I feel like that's it's been like that since I was little. I always wanted to do music and um and as I grow older I'm able to put those down in words and lyrics and yeah, I don't I don't know what else we would do. <laughs> I'm glad we have that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> really am. So are we. <laughs> Speaking of, um, there's a new song that you've started playing, but it's not released yet, but you're going to give us a special sneak peek, and it's called Made of Sin. Mm. What can you tell us about this song? Holy smokes. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, this one was born out of um, uh, the 215 when I first heard about that, and it just kept building and building and building, and it just it rocked me to the core, and it brought back all that stuff. So it's just like one of those things where it's just like, oh, I got I to gotta do something with what I'm feeling right now and, and how do I get through this? And, you know, through the years, it's always been music and pick it up and kind of work my way around that. Um, so this is the song that came out of that. And I was thinking about, like, what it is for, like, a kid to go through that stuff. And quite often kids, the children, you know, they take on the blame on themselves when things are, are, are bad or happening that are bad. And then um, when they get a little bit older, they kind of think, well, maybe maybe it was both of us, a bit of both of us, you know. And then um, an adult, you know, they get into adulthood and they think about it and they, they realize that it really had nothing to do with them at all. And, um, and then the journey begins, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Would you mind reminding Canadians what the 215 refers to? There was some unmarked graves that were found uh, in B.C., uh, and now throughout Canada, I think there was, it started out uh, as 215 unmarked graves uh, that kids were filling uh, uh, these grave sites, these burial sites that were unmarked. Um, sad, 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 sad day, and sad time in Canadian history. Uh, and I guess it's over, there's over, I think there's over 10,000 now or 11,000 or something that have been found. So that's a lot of children that didn't make it home. And it frustrates me because I, I hear like this this thing that people say like oh well maybe they died because of this or maybe they died because of that and the the point is is that you know yeah they died and it's very very sad but they shouldn't have been there in the first place you know so yeah and what do you hope people who are about to hear this song will take from it well um, I just I feel like music is healing and and maybe this will be one of those songs for that. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you get okay. set up for that song. You're listening to Music That Carries Truth, a special program for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on CBC Radio and CBC Music. I'm Rosanna Deerchild. Our musical guest today is the award-winning husband and wife duo Burnstick. We are recording live in CBC Manitoba Studio 11. Here is Burnstick with Made of Sin. child I dream through each night when what I find my own it's been some time now and still deep in my heart I am making the need you now like a thief in the night they come and take our love maybe I'm born with a curse Maybe I'm less than a sideways glance So I must be made of sin Oh, I must be made of sin And as a child I dream through each night Your arms too far to embrace May the light from your eyes never fade away I am making a need you now Like a 
like a thief in the night They come and take our love Maybe we're born with a curse Or maybe we're less in a sideways glance So we must be made of sin Oh, we must be made of sin Child, I dream through each night. These walls around me would break, and the hands that loved me would find me somehow. I am making a need you now. Like a thief in the night, they come and take our love. Maybe they're born with a curse. Or maybe they're less in a sideways glance So they must be made of sin Oh, they must be made of sin Oh, they must be made of sin There's Bernstick with their new song, Made of Sin. Um, I'm very emotional right now. I just, um, it was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Made of Sin hasn't yet been released. How's it feel singing that song publicly? I know how oh. it feels listening to it. Yeah. No, it's always a tough one for us to do that one. It's just one of those ones, but I feel like it has to be done. Yeah. yeah. Nadia, how do you feel about playing that song yeah it's a I mean I know what you've been through so it's it's really personal and it um it's hard to sing but it's it's really beautiful to sing at the same time I'm excited to that it be on our on our next album like I think that it it touches people every time we sing it so it's a good one why do you think it's important to sing songs like that about the 215 about your tough experiences Mm. You know, like, I think the, you know, like, well, there's a line in the song, like, you know, maybe I'm less than a sideways glance. Like, that's kind of like looking at the indifference that, you know, I've seen and experienced in my life where, you know, you walk into a room and like, no one will pay attention to you, you know, and no one can relate to some of the things that you've been through, you know, in this country. And it's just like, it's just people turned a blind eye to things, you know, and it's like, this this ignorance that is out there and this this education that doesn't exist about it, you know, that needs to more, you know, like, you know, I, you know, I went through it, but I didn't hear about any of it, this stuff until probably like my college years, you know, so it's just like, what? Like, how is that possible? So I think like just kind of bringing, you know, shedding some light on that topic and, you know, having people like realize, hey, these things happened. I even remember, like, in, high, in you know, like, sorry, in college that we started talking about it and people were, like, quiet in the class. were like, what, this happened here? You know, and people probably still don't know that it happened. And so it's, it's, yeah, anyway, it just shed, shed, some, shed some light on this topic. Yeah. In terms of education, um, you have your music. Um, you know, we have our stories that we tell as Indigenous uh, writers and storytellers. And uh, my own mother has been out there talking about her story. Many survivors are out there talking about their stories and sharing them, particularly on this day. Um, but in terms of education, in terms of teaching this in our schools, in our in our high schools, our colleges, our universities, to make sure that it doesn't happen again, whose job is that to do, do you think? Well, I, I think anybody who knows anything about it, it's important to pass on knowledge, no matter who they are. I mean, I'm even hearing about it, like, now, like, in um, elementary school. So when I was working in, you know, the justice background, I was working with Onashua and Justice Circle for a number of years. And 
um, you know, being supervisor there, I was, went out and did presentations in schools and I would hear about um, these stories in, in the class and I'd be like, you guys are learning about this and, and I'd ask them about it and we'd have these incredible conversations with grade six and seven year old, like grade seven, grade six and seven. And I was floored, you know, and that would never happen, you know, when I was a kid, like, not like that. So not nothing really. So it, it's, I think it's any, anybody's responsibility, everybody's responsibility in Canada to know like their history and where they're from and what happened. Yeah. There's some people that say that, you know, there are, there is a certain age where kids are just too young to learn about such dark, you know, mm. times of our history. Well, what would you say to those people? Oh yeah. Nadia and I struggle with that one too. And um, you know, with our son, it's just like, when do you, when do you tell him, you know, like some of this stuff and, and we, we began to tell him now. So he's starting to kind of get a little bit of a grasp of it, you know, and it's like, that's a good question. It's a sensitive one. I understand that people are going to feel differently about that. And that's, you know, that's everybody's right. You know, um, at some point you got to pull that curtain away and have a look at that. Mm. And I think um, there's a way yeah. to, I don't know, like the way that we I mean, teachers, I don't just tell him these stories. Like, I don't think it's like, we don't, I don't know. We approach it, I think, with the sensitivity that it doesn't, doesn't scare him, but also just will like, at least, at least he'll know. And I think that that's possible. I think that's possible at a young age to know those things. How old is your son? He's five. five. He's five. Yeah. yeah. So how does he react when you have these conversations with him? Well, I can see him thinking, you know, and I look at him and I think like, holy smokes, like the stuff I went through when I was his age and the difference of our lives, like that's amazing. So, um, yeah, he keeps it, he keeps it real, he keeps it going, he keeps it good, he keeps us happy. So, um, yeah. I don't think he realizes yet the, like, how devastating like that the history is. Like, I think for him, it's just like a story and I don't think he personalizes it yet. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they're five. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you do that at Care five. about cars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lego. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I think it. I think he thinks about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. We'll cross that bridge one day. Yeah. And um, the buzzword, of course, in Canada is reconciliation. Mm. Um, what do you think of that? What, what's, where do you stand on the road or the side of the road or at the traffic light? Where are you on this, on this idea of reconciliation? I think it's hard. <laughs> I think that there's too many people that don't know. And, um, but I'll, also like, I think it's possible, but I really think it starts with just relationships you have with others. I think that like, there's too much division still, and it's really hard to, <laughs> like coin or to like think of like everyone will reconcile in some manner when when some people don't even talk to indigenous people or don't know anyone that's indigenous and or like personally and I'm like that's weird <laughs> one <laughs> but like you know like there how is that how are we going to have reconciliation if those relationships don't exist and I so that's really I think that where it, where it has to start but I don't <laughs> I don't have all the answers for sure I don't know you think my love <laughs> oh man i don't know man uh that's a big street <laughs> it's a big street <laughs> yeah there's yeah. there's a lot it's i a mean long road yeah it, it is yeah where, where do you start you know i think just with education just being aware um having some sensitivity around it you know um i i you know growing up i don't hear it so much anymore which i'm really glad that i don't um but it's a whole thing of like get over it kind of thing and it's just like you know i hear that and it just used to just frustrate me so much and be like oh but what i realized is that you know what they're saying is that i don't care and so you know for those people uh if they don't care okay then you don't care and that's that's your thing um i'm not going to give you any energy you know i'm not going to put anything towards you um including anger or hate any of those stuff like do your thing you go do you'll do me you know take care of my family and that's the way it goes um but, you know, some people are open to it and just some people are not. And it's it's really something to see when people do open up and like, okay, damn, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a powerful thing. Mm, absolutely. 
Let's talk a little bit about your uh, latest album called Kia Now, which is Cree for us. Mm. You've described it as an album of hope and gratitude for the world that we live in. Can you tell me a little bit more about this <laughs> album? That album really started, I mean, it started, we started writing separately before we, um, like, were a couple. And so we kind of had these songs that we brought together as Burnstick. But really the album flourished once we were like a family and our son was born and we were finishing recording the album. Actually, we kind of recorded the whole thing, I think, when he was just born. Yeah. And so it really revolved around him in so many ways that it became this like family. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Burnstick is a family thing anyways. Yeah. Um, and and all the songs kind of uh, were around that that topic. Um, and then. We, so our son was born and we named him Keanu. And when we told Jason's mom what his name was, she said, oh, Keanu, that means us in Cree. And so the name isn't exactly the same, but it's so similar that she basically named it. Like yeah. We were like, that's what we're going to name the yeah. album, us. Perfect. That's what it's about. It's about these relationships, whether it be within our family or with our community or um or in the world and it, like those relationships are so important and they they feed us as a family and I think we in turn can give more so I think that's what that's sort of what it's about cool <laughs> 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 that's Brand all we got to add to that to no, 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 later. No, no. <laughs> that's good no it's good it's funny that you said um we started writing it before we were together i'm like haven't you guys been together since time immemorial i, I know like, yeah. it was like that hey <laughs> <laughs> but i think that first album it was like because we we hadn't um been burn stick for so long so we didn't have all these burn stick songs and so we had to sort of take some of our own songs to bring to the table whereas the like sort of the next album is really like burn stick song all burn on. stick songs <laughs> yeah but i think we definitely found our 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 voice in the first album you know it came it's like there it is like something happened i don't know what happened but boom yeah it's called chemistry baby yeah <laughs> chemistry <laughs> Uh, the next and last song you're playing for us is from that album. It's called Pay No Mind. Tell me a little bit about this song. Um, so, like, looking at, like, you know, rec reconciliation and that whole thing and, you know, just negative vibes around the world and things happening, you know, like in the news or whatever it is. Like, sometimes you just get part of the story and it's not the whole story and people form opinions around that and they don't really know what's happening, you know. And I, I was thinking about, like, um, like indigenous families and um, just some of the things that they're going through and just some of the things that kind of went through as well and just how the media doesn't always get it right and sometimes they put a spin on it that just doesn't, you know, it's wrong. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not the full picture. And I feel like we have more in common, you know, like everybody than we do differences, you know, when it comes to family and taking care of each other and love and all that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things going on, but... I feel like really at the end of the day, like, you know, like not given that negative energy any, any time, which is tough to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm pretty mm -hmm. negative until I have my first cup of coffee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, I'm, right? work, I'm working on it myself right now too. <laughs> and there is like, there is common ground. We have to find it. We have to find that common ground. And I think that's where we can start building those relationships and, and seeing so many beautiful things like that surround us and that, you know, and support like, and the support, I think that's that too. Like we have to support those that, um, like that, that don't have as much or that have gone through like harder things. And I think that if that support system can, can be there and we can see those beautiful things, then we can, we can make it work somehow. Well, I, you know, I brought this song to Nadia too, and like it wasn't finished, and um, she brought the chorus on, and really says like, you know, basically how you treat people, it all comes back to you, you know. So, just be kind, man. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's get you all set up. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Before we get all that started, Jason Burnstick and Nadia Burnstick make up the musical duo Burnstick, and here they are now with the song "Pay No Mind." Spread across the paper 
You say there's something coming I say it's always been I say it's always been Put your fears to rest I say put your fears to rest Cause it all comes back All comes back to you Cause it all comes back All comes back to you Time is changing, days have come and gone. Let's fill the space between us and sing a different song. And sing a different song. Cause it all comes back. Welcome back to a special program for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on CBC Radio and CBC Music. This is Music That Carries Truth. I'm Rosanna Deerchild, and I'm very excited about my next guest. I've been trying to get them on the show for, I don't know, a million minutes. Sebastian Gaskin is the recipient of the 2021 Western Music Award for R&B, Artist of the Year, and they won the Kevin Walters Songwriting Award that same year. Their first EP, Contradictions, was released in 2019, and there is much more to come from this multi-talented artist. Sebastian is from Tatasquia, Cree Nation. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Rosanna. Good to be here. So good to see you. Um, We're going to start off with a good old song from you called Snake Hold. Take it away, Sebs. Walking around inside my dreams Trying to figure it out Looking at the same old scenes But not without a doubt Oh, you've got to hold on me And I'm trying to get out 
try to ride the wave and breathe, but I just want to shout. We gotta get it out today, yeah. We gotta get it out on where, yeah. Y'all guarantee the best we play, yeah. Pay no mind to what the waste men say, and I've been wondering, now what we gon' do? Now that we're through with the old news, yeah. We could go out for the night, purple double cup got us feeling right, and we could just chill to the morning light. And if it go wrong, I'ma make it alright, do not. I'm gonna make it all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Walking around inside my dream, trying to figure it out. Looking at the same old scenes, but not without a doubt. Try to ride the wave and breathe, but I just want to shout. Well, I woke up this morning with the sun in my eyes. Can't get you off my mind, no matter how hard I try. Yeah. I know, I know that I should just let it breathe, but I can't seem to let go of these memories. I got my wands with me, so now we gonna play We riding around the city and we bumping shot hey, The city's cold and I need a change of scenery So so won't you come on and I'll take you to a place Where I'm walking around inside my dreams Trying to figure it out Looking at the same old scenes, but not without a doubt. Oh, you've got to hold on me, and I'm trying to get out. Try to ride the wave and breathe, but I just want to shout. That is Sebastian Gaskin with Snake Hold. What did I tell you? Amazing or what? Am I right? Right? <laughs> Thank you so much for that song. My pleasure. Can you tell me um, what the story or inspiration is behind that beautiful medley? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was inspired by a relationship I was in when I was younger. It was kind of one of those first love sort of situations, you know, and... Um, yeah, it was kind of, at the end of it, we kind of like broke up, we got back together again, broke up, we got back together again. So I liken that to the, you know, like having a snake around my heart sort of thing. Mm. And uh, yeah, kind of built off of that. Yeah. Do you write a lot about relationships? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, especially when I kind of first started writing, writing songs, you know, back in my teens, into my like early 20s. Um you know, but these days I, f I find that I'm kind of shying away from that a little bit. And, you know, I've been sort of opening up to the idea of writing about, you know, um, more maybe more political stuff. You know, like I've been wrote a, a song a while back called Brown Man, which sort of inspired by like the BLM protests and, you know, the MMIW movement and stuff like that. So but, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of my songs were definitely inspired by, you know, past relationships and current relationships. <laughs> And ongoing relationships. Ongoing relationships. <laughs> <laughs> how has uh, music been a place for you to explore those relationships and how you feel about them? You know, I always say that, and I'm sure this rings true for a lot of songwriters, like I wouldn't really be here if it wasn't for music and for songwriting, you know, and it's sort of become um, a personal therapist of, of sorts, you know, being able to process emotions and, you know, sort of writing them out on paper and, you know, so, yeah, it's a, a very integral part of, of my life, I'd say. 
Yeah. yeah. I was like asking musicians this because I always get such interesting answers as to um, when did you know that this, this was going to be your therapy? This was going to be your comfort. This was going to be the place for you to, to work on, on, on you. I mean, probably when I was like 13, I think when I wrote my first tune, I was just this heartbroken kid, you know, and I discovered that I was able to write these verses and, you know, that helped me get through those those first heartbreaks and boy, those are hard ones, you know. And uh, but like in, in terms of career, you know, I didn't really make that decision until I tried going to university in 2017. Um, went to U of M for architecture of all things. Mm. I think I was like into drafting in high school or something. I thought I could pursue architecture, but too much math. I think I lasted like three months and I was like, I'm going to go try and make a go of this music thing, you know? Mm. Yeah. That was March of 2017. Yeah. March of 2017. Do you remember yeah. the first time you um, actually were on a stage and were singing to other yeah. people? I mean, that was really early on. You know, my mom would enter me into talent shows up at the Tasquayak for treaty days. And so I think I must've been about nine, eight or nine um, yeah, I think, you know, those, those eight early or nine, days. Eight or nine, you were singing on yeah. a stage, no way. Yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> still, you know, it's kind of where I fell in love with it too, you know, like getting that reaction from the crowd sort of thing and, yeah. Weren't you scared? I would have been terrified. I was scared. Can I swear on here? I guess not at CBC. I was scared <laughs> poopless. <laughs> yeah, no, but, um. Yeah, I, I still I still get those feelings to you know to this day, you know, getting nervous before going on stage. I think, I think it's when you stop getting nervous is when you should be worried. That's true. I've heard that too. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned Treaty Days. Tell me a little bit about where you grew up. You live in Toronto now, but you yeah. grew up in a in a different place. Definitely, yeah. Almost the opposite of Toronto, you know. Um, Tatasca Cree Nation. It's about ten hours north of here. You know, beautiful, beautiful you know, the summertime, but, you know, it came with its trials and tribulations, you know, bullying and, you know, growing up in a reservation comes with its drawbacks, you know, being in a, a place where they're so heavily affected by intergenerational trauma and, you know, kind of having to work through that as a young man was definitely, uh, um, it was hard. Yeah. yeah. And what brought you and your family first to Winnipeg? Uh, well, my mom wanted to get me out of the out of the res, you know, because I was sort of falling in with the wrong crowd, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, she moved me down there for high school, and uh, kind of spent that latter half of my life there, yeah. here or here. And how was yeah. it? <laughs> it was great, you know. I mean, you know, high, the, going going through high school. I actually went to three different high schools here. Um, originally, I went to Tech Block for like grade nine and grade ten, but then I dropped out for like a semester. I was dealing with, with some like mental health issues and stuff like that. And so went back for grade 11. I went to Children of the Earth for grade 11. And then I ended up graduating from Kelvin. Huh. Yeah. But you made it through. We made it through. I got the diploma. You know, I did. I, you know, I kind of just got it to, to, to show my mom up. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did it. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, of course, music has been a powerful tool for you. Yeah. It's gotten you through a lot of dark times. Um, which is why we wanted to bring a, a little extra into this momentous day. September 30th is about honoring the stories of our residential school survivors, our families, our, our mothers, grandfathers, fathers, grandfathers, gookums. What do you think about on this day? I, you know, I think about my grandmother and grandfather. You know, may they rest in peace. They were definitely the pillars of my family. And, you know, losing them was definitely one of the some of the hardest times that we've gone through, you know, and I don't think we've ever really recovered from it yet, you know. But my grandmother was such a beautiful woman, you know. She was um, a counselor in Spit Lake for a number of years. But even after um, she left council, she was still um, an individual that people felt like they could go to in times of crisis, in times of familial loss, you know. So she was always out in the community, you know, making making food for people or you know because she was a gospel singer as well so she you know was always going to the band hall and you know she would be part of that group of women who would go to the funerals and sing for the families 
Wow. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So you yeah. have music in your family as well. Yeah, absolutely. Did you did you have a residential school history in your family? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am the first generation who didn't go to a residential school. All my really? mom, all my aunties, my uncles. How does that feel? I mean, it's kind of crazy because I was born the year that the last residential school closed, which is 1996, you know, so it's like kind of like got lucky there a little bit, you know. But, you know, you kind of, you still definitely feel the effects, you know, growing up and, you know, especially being born to like a younger mom, you know, there were like times where I like wake up to a party or something like that, that sort of thing. So, but, you know, we did our best. Yeah. Yeah. And here you are. And here we are. Uh, you have some new music coming out that leans into some of your own family history, speaking of. Uh, one of those songs is called Medicine. Tell me about that song. Yeah, medicine. That's um, kind of a, a different look at at love. A lot of my records have spoken about heartbreak and sadness and kind of getting through that. But medicine speaks about the other side of it. It's reveling in in a relationship and just being so enamored with somebody and enjoying that to the fullest extent. Mm. Well, let's give that a listen to. I'm going to let you get set up so that we can hear that song. Sounds good. You're listening to Music That Carries Truth, a special program for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on CBC Radio and CBC Music. I'm Rosanna Deerchild. My guest today is Sebastian Gaskin. Here they are now with Medicine. My baby, she a dancer Yeah, my baby, she a cancer She got me so enamored Yeah, she got the golden standard And she hold me down when I'm touching her roll Give it to me dirty when I'm getting home Give it to me straight when I'm acting so Out of character when I'm out the door And she got me like Way out, hey, out, hey, hey, out Way out, hey, out, hey, out Way out, hey, out, hey, out Way out, hey, out, hey, out If you're with it, we should kick it when I'm back in town be there in a minute, baby, hold it down Cause you know I've been smoking and it's liquor proud And I'm about to tell you how I feel right now Cause lately I'm starving and I'm trying to eat Sunday morning we be tangled in the sheets Cause I've been on the road for like a couple weeks And baby, we ain't nothing but some lovers And she got me like, way out, hey, out, hey, out Way out, hey It's you and me forever, we don't need nobody else You lift me when I'm out and I believe in myself You give me all your strength when I be down and needing hell It's you and me forever, baby, sickness and in hell And ooh, sometimes it gets complicated Stuck in miscommunication Sometimes we get frustrated but I'm here for you And everything you do Got me feeling like we made it Finally on top we sang it Girl, you got me like Way out, hey, out, hey, out 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 Girl, you got me like Way Sebastian Gaskin with their new song, Medicine. I noticed you got some Cree vocalizations in there, my Indeed friend. We do. Is that is that a new thing for you? Massively new. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. made you want to explore that? Um, I mean, like early on in my career, I sort of 
shied away from the indigenous artist label, you know, because I've, I've always felt that a lot of artists kind of get pigeonholed a little bit when it comes to that sort of label. Uh, so I kind of avoided using my culture in the music, you know. But over the past couple of years, I've definitely opened up to that and, you know, kind of been trying to reconnect with the culture a little bit more than, than I have been, you know. It's mm. in, it, I think it's especially important living in such a big city, you know. Like, it's pretty rare to even see another Indigenous person in on the streets of Toronto, you know, and... So I think it's important to uh, kind of go back to those roots. Yeah. A little different than Winnipeg. I'll say, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> we got our own mall here. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Portage Place First Nation. Portage you know. Place First Nation. <laughs> Was there something that changed for you that made you want to include your indigeneity in your music? I think it came shortly after... I started processing, like, the trauma of losing my grandparents, you know, because growing up in Split Lake, you know, it's a very religion-based reservation, you know, and so I didn't get to see much of my culture growing up, you know. I mean, besides, like, you know, a lot there's a lot of land-based teachings up in Split Lake, you know, like hunting, trapping, fishing, that sort of thing. But I never really got to experience much of, you know, the, the lodge or, you know, hot tents and stuff like that. So I really wanted to kind of reconnect with that, that, that side of myself and, you know, kind of feed, feed my spirit in that way. Mm. And how do you feel like it feeds your spirit to be uh, including that into your, into your life? I think it's instrumental, you know, especially being an entertainer. You kind of open yourself up to both the good and the bad, you know. And so having a strong spirit is something that is very important. Yeah. You recently signed with a label, Ishka Day Records, which Indeed. is an Indigenous-owned record label. How does it feel being surrounded now by by that, by indigenous musicians who are Indigenous, who are creating Indigenous sounds, and who support that in you? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. You know, it feels natural. I feel right at home, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's about time, I think. Yeah. You know? Just like Jeremy Dutcher said, we're kind of going through a bit of an Indigenous renaissance of music and art and it's beautiful to witness and to be a part of. Yeah. Well, welcome home, Sebby. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you hope that your music will carry you and your message? I mean, the whole world, really, you know. That's kind of the, the end goal, is, you know, world tour sort of thing. You know, kind of spreading the movement across, you know, to different nations, you know. I'd love, I really love to uh, travel to Australia and meet some, some of the indigenous folks down there. You know, I have a couple of connections with, uh, some artists from, from, um, Yorta Yorta Nation. So it'd be nice to get down there. Cool. You yeah, must manifest. Absolutely. Oh, manifestation is so important. Visualization. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> get a little board and tack Australia. Exactly. To it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a little whiteboard at home. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Visualization board. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. Um, now, the last song we're going to hear from you today is called False Nostalgia. Tell me a little bit about this song. False Nostalgia, I wrote this one back in 2018. It's a part of the Contradictions EP. Um, it's about the interesting way that our brains have a way of remembering a lot of the good parts about certain situations and the way we wanted them to be sort of thing. Um, specifically relationships for me, but that can be with anything, you know. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of an ode to the odd brain, the human brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give that a listen. All right. You're listening to Music That Carries Truth, a special program for the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation on CBC Radio and CBC Music. I'm Rosanna Deerchild. My special guest today is Sebastian Gaskin. Here they are now with False Nostalgia. Look into my eyes and hold me close 
Lights are down, we're intertwining souls Is this love or like it's I suppose We're getting close Closer to the center of attention Baby girl, did I forget to mention You're the one that stays up on my mind like all the time Will you be mine? Whoa, 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 no Drink, drink, left hand And a cigarette in your right hand yeah. She's just looking for the right man yeah. Don't you know that I'm the right I let my melody just put your mind at ease Reciprocation of these energies Oh, don't you know you are everything I need Baby, please come and me Oh, no, 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 yeah When I think of you, it's false nostalgia And I'm probably better off without you I'm just scared to put the time in I'm just worried it's online Oh, baby, come on to me Baby, come through, give it to me for free Yeah, when it's only you and me Yeah, we don't need nobody No, 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 we lost control Don't let me I know you know you got my You got my soul Oh, 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 oh no Drink, drink, and a left hand And a cigarette in the right hand yeah. She's just looking for the right man, yeah Don't you know that I'm the right I let my melody just put your mind at ease Reciprocation of these energies Oh, don't you know you are everything I need Baby, please Like I have to do the snappy finger thing instead of <laughs> applauding. <laughs> it's a jazz club, y'all. It's a jazz club now. We've turned this into a jazz club. That's Sebastian Gaskin in False Nostalgia. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for having me. Uh, also, thanks to Burnstick for helping us mark this year's National Day for Truth and Reconciliation with some beautiful music. You've been listening to a special edition of Unreserved Music That Carries Truth on CBC Radio and CBC Music. Thank you for joining the circle and being part of this important day. Until next time, I'm your favorite cousin, Rosanna Deerchild, coming at you from Winnipeg in Treaty 1 territory. Ganaskunamit Nawa, Egesay.